go. Hi, everybody. This is Barbara Mayerson from joyandsuccess.com. And I have with me today is someone from around the world, the other, the other part of the world. Um, I'm in New York and she's in Australia, Catherine Ross. And I'm so glad that she's with me today. And I want to welcome you, Catherine, to um, this interview. And thank you for joining me. Well, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> um, I, I wanted, um, I know you're an EF2 practitioner. Mm -hmm. which is, as all you people who are, who are tapping people know how fabulous it is. And that's how I found her. And um, I want her to, you know, please let us know a little bit about you and about your background and how you got into tapping. And mm -hmm. um, that would be great. Sure. Um, well, I got into tapping probably, uh, I was first introduced to it when I was about 16, 17, I think, uh, by my mum. So mm -hmm. she uh, she's always been very much into complementary therapies and, uh, and different modalities. And so she actually went and became a, a practitioner herself and wanted to help me through some of the things that I was experiencing in my teenage years. So I, um, of course, I think sometimes with teenagers, we don't like to listen to our mums. So I, I sort of pushed it away for a little bit. But uh, then I ended up just uh, seeing a practitioner myself when I was older and uh, I had some amazing results with her. And I thought, this is actually pretty good stuff. My mum wasn't wrong. <laughs> She's normally right. So, um, and, uh, and so I left it a while, alone for a while in terms of taking it on as a modality for myself. But uh, when I got made redundant from my job, um, I was uh, thinking, look, I have to do something heart centered. It's really, I need to do something more aligned with what my purpose is. And this really fitted because I started off doing some coaching, um, just basic coaching. And I thought I want something else that really uh, helps to shift people's mindsets and patterns and beliefs and feelings really quickly quickly and accesses the subconscious. So um, so that's when I went and did my certification and uh, became a practitioner. So I started about eight years ago now and uh, I've had my business break free with EFT ever since. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been a, a over eight years now and uh, it's my absolute passion. So my specialty is working with parents and children in anxiety and trauma. Um, and, you know, that said, I also do business mindset, which is one of my other passions as well. So helping small business owners overcome their blocks to success. Um, and yeah, so that's my, my story there in terms of the business, but I've also got two little girls myself, a four year old and an 18 month old who love tapping. So I've been tapping on them ever since they were born. Um, so they're my little protégés and, uh, and I live in Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. So yeah, it's a little bit cold. It's getting colder over here at the moment, but uh, we're heading into winter, so it's bound to happen. It's worse in New York. And it's, and it's yeah. <laughs> well, that's so great that the kids are learning. I mean, I think that that's like if the kids can learn, it's, it's perfect. Instead of waiting years later, like my age, and um, that it takes a long time to go get rid of all the blocks early in life, if they even have any blocks at that age. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing with, with children. I find that it works really um, quickly with kids too, because they don't tend to have those blocks or those layers of trauma and the cynicism and things like that, that uh, a lot of adults do as well. So they're, they're, you know, a blank page and they're able to take on board this self-regulation tool, uh, which is wonderful because it's, it's giving them a gift, you know, as they grow older to be able to clear anything that is um, coming up for them as well. And certainly something I wish I had when I was uh, going to 11 schools during my time. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's, fantastic to be able to give that to them. Do you find you have to go to the parents first and ask their permission or you can just go right to the kids? Um, well, I tend to work with both. So you know, because I work online uh, via Zoom, I'll see the parent and the child together. And uh, so it's sort of, you know, um, like killing two birds with one stone because the parent is able to tap on their uh, for their child or with their child, but they're also clearing their own stuff at the same time. So I find that a lot of the anxiety, for instance, um, with children is interlinked with the parents' anxiety. So especially with younger children, if you can't, the parents, then uh, that actually transfers through to the child as well and um, any their behavior. So do you find like the, the kids pick up their parents' anxiety and their stresses? Oh, yes, absolutely. I think especially at 
a time like this as well, we, we can't avoid the, the stress and the, um, the way that life has sort of turned everything upside down at the moment for us. So I think that uh, a lot of kids are actually picking up on, on parental stress, but processing it in a different way. So I often find that it shows up differently for children than it would do for us as adults as well. So just, you know, being aware of, of the signs and how they might be internalizing that anxiety or that stress is also really important. Do you, do you find like you have to be wear kid gloves with them? Like, can you be pretty honest with the kids? Pardon? Can you can you be really honest with the kids? You can um, you really let them speak their minds, or if they have their own fears, they can really talk about it and tap on it. Yeah, absolutely. And in tapping, it's so important that we we make sure that we're using the wording that is appropriate for whoever we're working with. So children have a very different vocabulary to parents. So, you know, a, say a, a five-year-old child might know what anxiety means. So it might just show up as like a pain in the tummy. So we'd be tapping on whatever they're saying, we will actually use that wording to address their own feelings because it's specific to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's so fascinating because kids, because I know like in tapping, like we go back to like years when we were little and like try to remove all that stuff and the kids can just go right into, oh, I'm anxious <laughs> and mommy's anxious and, you know, how do I, how do I try to help mommy do? I guess they try to help mommy too and just uh, don't make the mommy feel worse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we know when, when children are calm, parents are calm. When parents are calm, children are calm. So it's a, it's a great technique for, for everybody, I think. And also, you know, as parents, modelling the technique and modelling the fact that you are, we are regulating your own emotional state is also setting the tone for the children to, to pick up on. Like, even if there's a stressful situation going on, that this is the way, you know, you deal with stress because we're always picking up signals um, and learning how to actually process and deal with stress in our environment. And that's how we end up passing on things like um, uh, mental health issues or, uh, you know, depression, anxiety, because our children are literally picking up the cues as to how to react to our environment as well. So, uh, and to their environment. So it does show up in that way generationally. So if we're <clears throat> halting that response and we're showing them how to actually turn it around so simply, they are able to do the same, which is a, is a wonderful gift for them as well into adulthood. And I guess, and learning it now is an early age and their parents do and they don't have to step down their feelings. And yes. um, they're allowed to express how they feel. And mm -hmm. tap on that, that's great. Um, now we, I wanted to do some tapping with you. Um, you want to tap on children and, and um, the parents or what would, what would be uh, anxiety? What would be um, you like to tap on? Yeah, well, I think um, maybe something that might be relevant to a lot of people in, in this time, especially with, you know, all the uh, the, the way that life has um, been going lately. I know that things over there are quite uh, quite intense emotionally and, and it's very stressful. It's a whole different way of life that we have to adapt to at the moment. Um, and we're similar over here. We can't go outside of our houses unless it's for four reasons. Um, so it's, it's quite, uh, it condenses the stress, I think, because you can't, you know, you're not able to go out, you're not able to do the things that you want. It just can um, bubble up a lot as well. So maybe if we tap on um, anxiety in general, then, you know, you can do this with, if you're watching and you're a parent, you can do this with your child or you can do it on yourself. And uh, maybe just a general round on anxiety and uh, and stress, if that suits you. Yeah, that'd be great. I was just thinking how I, I saw you originally with the lack of toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I was all this is that completely is, is empty the shelf, and um, yeah. but I know like with me the anxiety by like, getting caught up in the fear of mm -hmm. other people. Like if I'm not feeling it when I go to the store and I'm finding everybody else, and you just get caught up in everybody else's stuff. Um, so you know that you know that was um that was very apropos when I saw the toilet paper thing because yeah, it's <laughs> like you know there's no more toilet paper there. It's, it's, Exactly, exactly. It's still none over here as well. So it's yeah, a bit not <laughs> They have senior hours over there like they have over here. 
We do, but it didn't go uh, to plan apparently. So it was a bit still pandemonium and uh, and everything. But uh, but yeah, it's it's interesting. And I think that you know when you do go to the shops and you see all those shelves bare, it's so jarring and it can just trigger that natural stress response in our brain as well. And when you do see other people stockpiling or you know racing towards things, it's just a natural instinct that we have because there is that scarcity that comes out. And that's what I did um, in that video about yeah. the toilet paper. <laughs> what did happen? and toilet paper have in common and um and it's that scarcity mindset and that lack mentality as well but it's driven by fear and anxiety so maybe if we do um yeah fear and anxiety i think because it's quite prevalent in our society at the moment yeah and, and i think yeah the, the if we had any lack issues at all at all which most people have it's really intensified so yeah so let's let's, let's start yeah. start doing some tapping i got my beautiful <laughs> we'll try to quiet down okay <laughs> Good. Okay. Excellent. So let's just start on the karate chop point or the side of the hand. So you just choose a side, doesn't matter which one, whichever feels comfortable. And I just want people to think about that stress and anxiety, <clears throat> that fear that they have. And if there's something specific that's going on for you, that's really triggering that stress or anxiety, really tune into it because the more specific we are in tapping, the better. But if you hold the intention of what it is that's really stressing you out the most, you're going to get more benefit. Okay. okay. So you rate the intensity of the emotion that you're feeling out of 10. So how intense is that stress or anxiety or fear right now out of 10? So 10 is obviously it's pretty intense and zero is not at all. So just seeing where you sit on that scale. And the reason that we do this is to help gauge, you know, our success when we check back in after the tapping, because we can see that response and the intensity shifting, which is really good. So once you've got a number, we're just going to start tapping. So all you have to do is just follow along with me and say what I say. So tuning into that feeling of stress and anxiety around your current situation and okay. just repeating after me. Okay. <laughs> even though, even though I have all this stress and anxiety, I have all this stress and anxiety, and I'm caught up in this fear, and I'm caught up in this fear. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though. Even though I have all this stress and anxiety, I have all this stress and anxiety, and I'm getting caught up in this fear, and I'm getting caught up in this fear. I choose to let it go. I choose to let it go, and know that I am safe right now. You know that I am safe right now. Okay, top of your head. All of this stress and anxiety. All 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 this fear that I'm getting caught up in. All this fear that I'm getting caught up in. This lack mentality. This lack mentality. Driving this stress and anxiety. Driving this stress and anxiety. All this stress over the state of the world. All this stress over the state of the world. All this anxiety over the way my world has changed. All this anxiety over the way my world has and it's under your arm. So for women, it's where your bra strap sits. Um, and for men, just in line with the nipple there. Okay, so all this stress and anxiety. All this stress and anxiety. All this stressful feeling. All this stressful feeling. I'm feeling really anxious when I go to the shops. I'm feeling really anxious when I go to the shops. And nothing is on the shelves. And nothing is on the shelves. It's really triggering my stress response. It's really triggering my stress response. All this fear around the uncertainty. All this fear around the uncertainty. Fueling my anxiety. Fueling my anxiety. Release and let it go. Release and let it go. It's okay for me to let it go now. It's okay for me to let it go now. I choose to focus on what I can control. I choose to focus on what I can control. And I'm releasing the need to be anxious right now. And I'm releasing the need to be anxious right now. Focusing on regulating my emotional state. Focusing on regulating my emotional state. It's safe for me to let go of this fear. It's safe for me to let go of this fear. It's safe for me to let go of this stress. It's safe for me to let go of this stress. It's safe for me to let go of this anxiety. I am deeply safe now. I am deeply safe now. 
and all is well in my world. Okay, so deep breath in and out. Okay, so then you check back in and re-rate the intensity of that stress or anxiety or fear out of 10 again and just tune into that thing. So if it's something specific that you had in mind that you were tapping on or focusing on, just um, trying to work up that same response and see uh, where you sit on that scale of zero to 10. So that's a very quick, yeah, a quick few rounds. But um, what were you going to say, Barbara? Yeah, I started out about an eight, now I'm down four, three or four. Good. Good. So you have to. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. That was great because, um, you know, it, it's amazing. You don't realize how easy it is to release this anxiety and the stress. And even though it, it will come back again and maybe in different things, it's so, so amazing that we have yeah. this, this um, tool now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you um, do that again, so once you've got it down to four, you could tap again and get it down even further. And, uh, and yeah, the thing is, is that when you do it in a general sense, like we've done today, uh, because, you know, you might not be addressing the specific issue or tapping on it for a while, it can pop up from time to time. But generally, if you work enough on a specific issue that is underlying that stress and anxiety, say, for instance, something, um, something else was going on underneath that, when you really get to the crux of of it you release that response so you're literally training the hippocampus in your brain as well which is responsible for comparing uh, past signals to current threats in our environment you're actually retraining the brain as to how to respond to those threats so that you know that response isn't going to be as intense as it normally would as well so the more you tap the more you're training your brain to update its learnings i know like um just to be even tapping, even if you don't know what you want to be tapping on, and you just, if you're feeling anxious in general, you don't even know why, but you can just tap and it'll get, go away or calm down. Exactly. So you, you just go with whatever you're feeling as well. So make sure that, you know, even if the words that I say don't resonate specifically, change the wording. It's That's the great thing about tapping is that it's so flexible and so adaptable to any emotion or event or feeling. Um, and, and that's the thing, you, know, you can't stuff it up either. So that's what I like about it. There's Even if you skip a point or, you know, you miss a phrase, you're not going to get less benefit. Um, so, so as long as you tap and you're talking about your issue, you're going to get some form of benefit as well and even like as you said <clears throat> kind of me when you're just tapping on say you're feeling strange and just feeling anxious often because we're calming down that stress response you're switching back on your pre prefrontal cortex which means that you can get more information around what's actually going on you get perspective maybe something can pop up for you where you understand oh that's where that comes from or that's actually what's really bothering me underneath and uh, and so when you get objectivity and clarity and perspective you can move forward and problem solve a lot better as well i think what's so great about it is and then i'm finding for myself that um i would get angry at myself if i made a bad decision on something but then i realized if I'm so stressed out, if I'm making decisions, they're not going to be right if I don't slow down, calm down, yeah. and just to have more calm, compassion for myself and other people that's right. there. Um, yeah. So, um, well, well, that's really great. Did, did your husband see a tapper too? Was he? Oh, I think I'd have to strap him to a chair to tap on him. He's a, <laughs> he's a typical male. I don't have any problems. I don't need to talk about my problems. So I just do it surrogately for him. <laughs> I, I think it's such an amazing tool. And sometimes I go to the store and I see everybody crazy and I'm like, oh, I have this amazing tool there out, out there. And I wish more people had it. And I, yeah. I think we'll get it. Well, you know, little by little, it's getting out in the world. Well, I really mm. appreciate you so much, Catherine, for being here and for, for tapping with me and for meeting mm. with me. And um, so who knows, someday we'll maybe meet in, part, in person, either here or in New York or in Australia. Or somewhere in the middle. I don't know where the yeah. middle is. When we can fly again would be a good start. <laughs> fly again, yeah. Um, so it was it was such a pleasure. And um thank and you, I thank you so much. And um, thank you. um everybody, thank you so much. And I will get the video out to you as soon as we can. So thank you for joining us.